So we've learned that temperature is a measure of the average translational kinetic energy of the molecules or atoms that make up a substance. We've also learned an older definition of temperature, which is it's the thing that is equal when thermal energy, heat, stops flowing between the two objects. So turn that around. Heat stops flowing between the two objects when they're at the same temperature. Let's look at uh, how that happens and how those two uh, sort of very different sounding definitions mm, jive with each other. So let's look at this slide. Um, here we see two systems. We have a hot system and a cold system. And in this thought experiment, we've insulated them from their surroundings, so no heat is flowing into or out of this container. Uh, now we know that if we put a hot thing next to a cold thing, the, uh, the, where they can exchange energy, the hot thing will cool down, the cool thing will warm up. Okay, how does this work though? Well, on the, in the hot side here, we've got particles that are moving very fast. A higher temperature means a higher average translational kinetic energy. So these are some fast moving particles over here on the hot side. When they have a collision with the cool side, we see a fast thing running into a slow thing. Well, guess what happens when we have that situation? Well, the slow thing speeds up and the fast thing slows down. It's just how collisions work. And, um, you know, go back and look at some of your homework problems from the uh, from our collisions, our conservation of momentum unit, and you'll see that that is true. I got a fast curling stone comes in and hits a hockey puck that is stationary and at rest. What's the end result? The curling stone slows down, the hockey puck speeds up. This is always the case. I run one cart into another cart. The first cart slows down, the second cart speeds up every single time, right? And so we see then that in this way, through just collisions, like we learned about in our conservation of momentum chapter, just through con collisions, we find that energy is transferred from the hot side to the cold side. Well, when does this stop happening? Well, when the kinetic energy of the hot side, average kinetic energy of the hot side, is about the same as the average kinetic energy of the cold side. Then on average, when these collisions happen, we don't get that transfer of energy. Okay, so again, we call this thermal equilibrium. So when does heat stop flowing? When the two objects are in th thermal equilibrium. When is the temperature the same? When the two objects are in thermal equilibrium. So we see that these two definitions of temperature are very, very similar. Again, two systems placed in thermal contact will transfer thermal energy from hot to cold until their final temperatures are the same. And so this happens spontaneously, right? As we'll learn here in a bit when we cover uh, refrigerators and heat engines, we can move heat from, the cold so from a cold object to a hot object. It just takes an additional input of energy in order to make that happen. Uh, here is a quick clicker question. Two containers of the same ideal gas and same temperatures have these masses. Which gas as atoms with the largest average kinetic energy. So here we see a 100 grams of a gas at 50 degrees Celsius, and here we see a, a t box with 20 grams of a gas at 50 degrees Celsius, um, and poss but possibly we think that they're the same. So which box has the largest average kinetic energy, or are they the same? Why don't you pause the video and think about it, I'll see you on the other side. Well, let's recall how temperature is defined. It is the average translational kinetic energy of the particles that make up a substance. And we'll, we'll get to an equation that tells us exactly how to get from, you know, temperature in, in Celsius or, or in Kelvin uh, to kinetic energy of a nitrogen molecule. We'll get there. But for right now, we can just say that those two things are different ways of expressing the same idea. Temperature and average kinetic energy of the particles of that make up a substance. So, we can just, with that... With that definition, we can just say, hey, these guys have the same average kinetic energy. Why? Because they're the same temperature. It doesn't matter how many grams I have. We're talking about an average, an average. So the average kinetic energy is the same. Now we have two containers of the same ideal gas, same temperature. Which gas contains the most thermal energy? Why don't you pause the video and think about that? Okay, are they still the same? 
Well, now we're not talking about an average anymore. We're talking about the total thermal energy. And in order to take the, th the total thermal energy, we need to add up the thermal energy of every particle that's in each one of those boxes. And since on average, these particles have about the same average kinetic energy, since they're the same temperature, well, the bigger one just must have more thermal energy, right? There's more gas at the same temperature, so we have more thermal energy. The average is the same, but we've just got more energy here. Okay. This brings us to the first law of thermodynamics. And the first law of thermodynamics is one of those kind of tricky things that we learn about in this class where... The math itself is is very straightforward. It's just three things added, you know, two things added together to make a third thing. I mean, that's pretty straightforward. But using it can be tricky. Applying this equation properly, now that's where the tricky part comes in. Um, so here's the first law of thermodynamics. It says for systems in which only the thermal energy changes, the change in thermal energy is equal to the energy transferred into the system, into or out of the system as work, heat, or both. Okay, in other words, this is just a mathematical statement of something that I've been saying now for a couple weeks, which is, how do we change the energy of a system? We can do work on it, or we can add heat to it. Heat and work are transfer variables. They are how we move energy into or out of a system. And that's exactly what this equation says. It says, okay, now if we're just talking about thermal stuff, right, so now we're not, we're not getting something going quite yet, right, we're not, uh, you know, we're not adding to the potential energy or the the, the translational kinetic energy or the rotational kinetic energy of the object as a whole, we're only talking about thermal energy here. So if we're just talking about thermal energy, well, then that's all that goes on this other side here, right? Remember that when we had the work energy theorem, we had, oh, well, we can change all different kinds of energy over here by doing work on it. But now we're, 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 we're limiting ourselves to only thermal processes. So how can I change the thermal energy of the system? I can either do work on it or I can add heat to it. It just kind of makes sense as long as we have wrapped our brains around what work and heat are. Let's be careful with our signs here. In, in, in this case, our convention is always positive if we are adding energy to the system. So I do work on the system, that is positive work. I add heat to the system, that is positive heat or positive Q. If the system does work on the environment, then that's pulling energy out of the system, that's negative work. If we pull heat out of the system, then that is negative heat. Now, be a little bit careful. If you go uh, looking online or to other resources besides our, our textbook or our lectures here, uh, you'll see that sometimes this sign changes. So this convention for Q that we have down here, that is positive when I add it to the system, and it's negative when I take it out of the system, uh, there is no one standard convention for that. Right. In this book, we use positive for adding to the system and negative for taking heat out of the system, which to me makes the most sense. I think it's the best choice. Uh, but other textbooks, other sources will actually reverse that sign convention, in which case you'll see this written with a negative sign. It is still the same equation. It's just a different sign convention for Q. So just, just watch out for that. As long as you, again, remember what this process is, that how do we change the thermal energy? Well, we give it some heat or we give it some work, right? We can say that without adapting sign conventions. And if you get that straight in your head, then you can keep the sign conventions straight also. Let's just do a real quick example. Uh, the tricky thing about this, again, it's not doing the math. It's just three things. Uh, it's just keeping your signs straight. So let's go ahead and, and let's do this example. 500 joules of work are done on a system in a process that decreases the system's thermal energy by 200 joules. How much energy is transferred to or from the system as heat? Okay, so let's keep in mind our, our equation, right? And, and our equation is that delta E thermal equals Q plus W. Okay, so let's list what our, our values are here. How much energy is transferred to or from the system as heat? Well, remember that Q is, what we're, is heat, so that's what we're looking for. Work. We've got 500 joules of work done on the system. Is that positive or negative work? Well, I'm doing work on the system, so I'm adding energy to the system, 
Therefore, it is positive. And it decreases the thermal energy by 200 joules. Uh, this one's usually pretty straightforward. Decreased is negative. Okay, so now that we've gotten our numbers and our signs straight, uh, we know we're solving for Q, so we can write Q equals E thermal minus W. So that is negative 200 joules. minus 500 joules. And so we end up with Q equals negative 700 joules, okay? So let's interpret that. Negative means heat is leaving the system. And so we should say joules left. Okay, so that is our answer. Again, it's not the addition and subtraction that's challenging. It's the keeping the signs straight and wrapping our brain around these ideas. Although, again, to reiterate, this is just conservation of energy, right? So this, so, so the, the first law of thermodynamics is just conservation of energy applied to thermal processes. So in a way, it's nothing new. I mean, it is it's some new ideas and new... There's some subtlety here that's new. Um, but it's still just conservation of energy. 